Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Liz from Liz's Party Designs. Today I'm working on creating a bubble wand sticker label. These are the bubble wands that I purchased on Amazon. They come in a pack of 12, 18, or 30. The reason I chose these is due to the colors that resemble the characters or a lot of the colors in the Sesame Street theme. Um, also, the number two reason was the reviews on the items on this item was way better than a lot of other products that I saw on the website for the same thing. And when you have a business, you want to make sure that you have a good quality item that also has a great review uh, for whatever reason that whatever item that it is you're purchasing and using in your business you want to make sure that it is good quality as well so I'm going to come back to the silhouette software um, I'm gonna start here with the template uh, the gray shaded area template this is not the actual size of the template it is enlarged due to recording purposes only and they will be available in my Etsy shop for silhouette and Cricut softwares so I'm going to go ahead and get started. This was a Google search image right here, the Sesame Street theme sign. You can purchase them on Etsy to where you can get them customized. You can customize them yourself or you can just get a blank one as well if you don't want to do all the work and cover them on your own. I'm going to show you how I created my own using this Google search image. So what I did was um, I went to file. I went to open and then I downloaded from my computer folder into my silhouette software and this is the Sesame Street sign that I have. I'm going to come over here to the shape drawing tools uh, tab and I'm going to get the rectangular rounded shape. Alright, I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to draw the rectangular rounded shape just over my sign here. You're covering up the Sesame Street wording. Alright, so that's what I did here on this side and this just goes over the symbol like that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our Sesame Street sign here. You can purchase these on Etsy. They do come blank like this or you can create your own through Google search. Um, you could also do a Google search and find if there's any blank ones or create it yourself or you can go on Etsy and have uh, have someone make it for you. They're not that expensive. They should be only a few dollars or so and uh, you can customize it the way you want to. So then I'm going to come over here to font and I'm going to add happy birthday. Actually I'm going to do all caps happy birthday alright so I'm going to bring that down to size a little bit just a little bit more and I'm going to fill that in with white I'm just keeping this as original as I can just to even match the theme. You can get creative and add color if you want. It's up to you how you want to create it. It's your stuff. Alright, so I'm going to widen, stretch that out. You saw how I stretched that out a little bit. And I'm going to place it onto the sign. I'm going to click the sign and the font together. And I'm going to hit align send. Then for the um, the circle part up here, I can leave it as one, two, three, or I can just change it to the original was one, two, three. I'm going to leave it at that. One, two, three, happy birthday. Or I could just add this back and put my own number, which is a number one, number two, whatever age it is that they're turning that you want to put there. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Our sign is ready. You can even cut these out and put them on. 
You can even cut these out and just put them on your bubble wands. It's really up to you which, how you want to customize them. These are really cute. That'll be really cute on there too. Okay, so now we're going to come up here to our gray shaded template. It is a two-piece template. Um, I don't recommend you resizing this unless you really, really have to and you can't find the bubble wands that you want. You can resize it to the size you need. You would just simply have to measure the length that you need it to be and the width and figure out how to size the label for it to fit. I would suggest just making a template, cutting it out and see if it fits and then start designing it just to help you get the shape or the size that you need for it to fit on your product. So I'm going to click on the dark shaded area. I'm going to come up to library and I'm going to fill it in with my digital clip arts that I have downloaded in my software for this theme. And that is this polka dot style uh, digital paper that I purchased a while back on Etsy as well. On Etsy they have digital files that match color themes for any events and all of that. There's so many different vendors. The quality is amazing and I really like using Etsy for all my digital clip arts and back, backgrounds and digital papers like scrapbooking and stuff like that is really what that is used for. But mostly, of course, you can put them into your Cricut or Silhouette software and use them as, um, just like I did here, our digital backgrounds, all right, or digital fill-ins. So if I wanted to, I can add another pattern here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it a solid color, and I'm going to make it white. Okay, so now I'm going to group. I'm going to gather and group those two pieces together. I'm going to bring my sign up to the temp or to the um, label. I am going to gather both of them, object, align, and center. Okay, so then now uh, you can see the little flag-like clip art shapes that I have here. That was also a purchase from Ed Bart that you have that you want to add to your pattern here. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I am going to go ahead and add I'm just going to keep the characters and I'm going to keep it uh, actually you know what okay I'm going to take that back. I'm going to go ahead and just clip on, click on these that I have already and bring them over to this side of my label and I'm going to duplicate these on this side as well and add it to my label here. Now I am going to go to file open and I'm going to start inserting my characters um, just wherever it is that you have your character saved on your on your computer is what you will type in to get your clip arts and it could be whatever clip arts you want it doesn't have to be exactly the ones I use it's whatever so I already have these in my software uh, silhouette studio file so all I'm going to do is it's going to open it in its own folder. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to copy it. I could have merged the file, but I didn't. I just didn't want to. I just didn't do it that way. Okay. So I'm going to add this character here. You can add as many characters as you want. It doesn't have to be all the characters. It could be just one. You can add more wording. And then I had already opened this one, so I'm going to come over here and copy it and paste it over here. You can also Google search, um, like say this character, coloring page. Just type in Elmo coloring page or Elmo SVG. You'll be able to go in there and change the colors. Like say you want a blue Elmo just because you want a blue Elmo. Or you want a green Elmo just because you want a green Elmo. 
you can go in and do that in the Silhouette software. Once you download it into there, and I've done pieces like that before, and they're just super cute. Okay, so there we go. That's it. Then, all I will do is um, create all the labels I want. I think one, two, three, four, five. I was able to fit five labels on a sheet for printing and I did not run it through my machine to cut because sometimes uh, the silhouette it, it likes to cut off it doesn't I don't know it just doesn't cut right sometimes and it kinda leaves a white a really thick white or an uneven cut or it might cut a little bit more on the top where the polka dots are and leave a little white line around on the bottom part um, and I just don't want to add an offset to this so I'm gonna cut these by hand now if you have more than you want to assemble at one time let's say you're doing a hundred of these and you're like no way I'm cutting those by hand I would add an offset to it so by an offset I mean I am going to take this outer edge part so let's say I'm done designing I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate as many as I want or duplicate and re create different designs as I want and print and cut by hand now if I want to cut it by machine I would suggest putting an offset just because for the reason I just explained previous to a few seconds ago what I just said because of the off cutting it does sometimes I can't figure out why my machine does it it doesn't do it all the time it does it when it wants to do it and it infuriates me because I put expensive high quality sticker paper into my machine I put my paper into my good quality printer with good ink and I'll be pissed if it cuts off five labels the wrong way it just enrages me and I don't catch it sometimes because I'm multitasking let's say I'm cutting a label and creating a label or I'm cutting a label and assembling other stuff and once I realize it's cut like five or six labels off I'm pissed so that's one reason I hand cut sometimes even if it's just 20 labels I'll just cut them by hand not a big deal not difficult to cut it's just straight lines then if I want to run it through my machine like I said I would suggest highly suggest doing an offset and doing by doing an offset I'm gonna click on the outer shape of my label I'm going to come over here to the offset setting button and I'm going to make the offset 0 0.050 that's always the offset number that I use I'm going to fill it with white and outline it with red Now fill it with white, outline with red. Okay, so now you see that very little box around the label. You're not going to see it on the white background, but let me move it over for you. Let me zoom out. And I'm doing this step because uh, people are getting familiar with the software. People are getting familiar with creating labels and so on and so forth. So if you don't, if you're not interested in this step, you can just fast forward. All right, I'm going to duplicate it. I want to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to remove this offset. And let's say you run your machine through, or you run your labels through the machine with it just looking like this with no offset you're risking it not cutting correctly or cutting off on your expense compared to excuse me for cussing but I do sometimes 
compared to it having an offset like this side over here and you're going to get that clean white background on your labels. You can go as thin as you want or as thick as outline as you want. You can make them thicker. It does give it a clean finished look as well. It's up to you how you want to do it. So there's my two labels. I've already explained why one looks has a white background, why the other one doesn't. And I will see you all later. Talk to you guys. I'll try to get up another video as soon as I can. And thank you all for watching.